How dangerous is a Chinese brand K40 laser? Opinions differ when it comes to how dangerous those Chinese branded or non-branded laser cutters really are. Some sources on Google and YouTube say it is a try to take over the world by the Chinese to make us all blind. Others say as long as you use it with some caution, it is a fantastic tool. I read in my own comments that the uncoherent UV radiation could cause skin cancer and eye damage as well even when reflected off the wall or the ceiling in the room. Ah! But what is true? How dangerous is this device really? To get some order in all those mostly confusing opinions, I decided to make a video dedicated to laser safety and specialty about the K40. I needed a trustworthy source of gathering my data, so I decided to get in contact with someone who really knows what he's talking about, the German Academy for Laser Safety in Berlin. Experienced and graduated engineer Mrs. Schneeweiss and Dr. Professor Eichler, professor at the Boyd University of Applied Science in Berlin and the University of Rio de Janeiro, helped me to find some answers to my questions that I want to share with you. Without any further ado, let's get started with an obvious question. Does the orange PVC window in the lid really filter out all of the laser radiation and makes it safe to watch the laser operating without any appropriate safety goggles? Professor Eichler says, a safety shield needs to be exactly adapted to the wavelength of the laser to ensure appropriate shielding. Now, what does that mean for us hobbyist laser freaks? Let's have a general look into laser-like characteristics. There are multiple sorts of lasers and wavelengths, so logically there are different forms of shielding necessary. Let's talk a minute about wavelengths. Take for example a simple light bulb. The emitted light has a certain color temperature. Um, that is defined in degrees Kelvin. In case of a classic tungsten light bulb, we are talking about a temperature of about 3200 degrees Kelvin. That's also the white balance preset on a video camera, keeping everything more or less in the right color aspect when filming under tungsten light conditions. Scientifically, however, we talk about electromagnetic radiation that gets measured in wavelengths. I am just scraping the subject here, as getting further into this thematic would exceed the length and purpose of this video. But the for us humans visible wavelength of light lies between 380 and 750 nanometers. A tungsten light bulb does not only emit one wavelength of light, but emits wavelengths all over the visible and even parts of the invisible wavelength spectrum. Besides light, heat is also an electromagnetic radiation that lies in the infrared spectrum. However, in this case, the peak and brightest wavelength the bulb emits lies in the red and infrared spectrum, what gives the bulb a whitish-orange glow. Lasers work differently, they are monochromatic. What means that a laser beam only has one certain wavelength. A red laser pointer, for example, emits a laser beam with a wavelength of 650 nanometers, but can range between 635 to 700 nanometers, depending on the type of construction and calibration. A blue laser pointer emits a wavelength between 550 and 490 nanometers, a green one 532, and so on. However, the wavelength of a carbon dioxide laser lies way up the scale in the infrared spectrum of 10,600 nanometers or 10.6 micrometers. So a invisible dangerous high power beam that would not trigger your eye blink reflex as it only gets triggered by visible light. So you see what I'm trying to say here, we are working with an invisible very dangerous sort of power that needs to be used with extreme caution. But what does that all mean for the safety shield in our K40 laser? Is it safe? Well, every wavelength can be shielded, rather by a specially temperated sandwiched glass or polycarbonate plastic like Macrolone, other than most of the visible wavelengths that can pass through clear or colored glass and plexiglass, the wavelength of a carbon dioxide or CO2 laser gets blocked by it. So if a CO2 laser beam would get reflected directly through the shielding, it would start to burn a hole in the material instead of simply shine through. So at least we now know that the window in our K40 laser isn't only for decoration, but I don't want to give you a false feel of safety here. Now when the laser gets stopped by a simple sheet of polycarbonate, why is the window tinted orange then? 
Well, the orange color of the shield is chosen as it blocks a wide range of unvisible and visible wavelengths on the other side of the wavelength range between 200 and 540 nanometers. What goes down into the UV spectrum? A carbon dioxide laser tube, such as the K40 uses, produces beside infrared radiation some incoherent UV radiation, comparable with a welding arc that needs to be shielded as well. Incoherent simplified means that these wavelengths are not part of the actual laser beam and spread out like the light emitted by a light bulb. Even incoherent parts like UV or reflections of a class 4 laser, like the K40 is, can damage your eyes and skin. Same as when welding, says Professor Eichler. So the safety shield of our K40 laser has two purposes. Blocking the coherent high power laser light in the infrared spectrum and blocking the uncoherent UV emission on the low end of the wavelength range. The manufacturer of the K40 does not give us any exact information about what the shield is exactly made of. We can't trust this piece of plastic, as it could be a simple piece of orange tinted acrylic. Shielding for high power lasers should always have an indication of optical density, or OD for short, engraved somewhere onto the window. For a 40 watt carbon dioxide laser, it should have an OD or optical density of plus 5. For my thinking, a Chinese manufacturer that fulfills these criteria would proudly promote this everywhere on the machine and probably tag it in the title of the eBay auction, which is not the case. So as a conclusion, is the orange safety shield of a K40 trustworthy? No, I personally stick with the rule that the shielding window might help to prevent direct laser light escaping from the inner of the machine, but as we don't know what OD rating this sheet of plastic has, I would never watch the machine operating without using an additional pair of safety goggles that I will talk about here in a minute. So moving on to the next question, that is sure pretty negligent and dangerous. How dangerous is a K40 laser when operating it with the lid open? Professor Eichler's answer is short and straightforward. A class 4 laser product such as the K40 should under no circumstances ever be operated with the lid open or missing shielding against laser light. There is not much I would add to this answer. I would recommend you, the user and also suggest the manufacturers to install a micro switch into the lid that prevents the laser from even turning on when the lid is open. This is a small, very cheap, quick installation that can save your eye light for the rest of your life. Simply hook up a brake contact micro switch between the little laser switch on the control panel and screw the switch into the chassis with a self-threading screw in a way that it simply breaks the circuit when opening the lid. If this interests you, please let me know in the comments and I may show you in a follow-up video how I make this simple but very important upgrade. Is it true that the risk of injury is higher when engraving or cutting bright materials as dark colors absorb more of the inducted energy? Professor Eichler says, it depends on the wavelength of the laser. Generally speaking, it is safer to use materials with a rough surface to avoid too much direct reflections. Burning off spray paint from a metal surface, for example, is a very dangerous task, as the shiny metal surface obviously act as a mirror. Cutting acrylic, on the other hand, absorbs most of the energy. Still, it is to mention that also acrylic does not absorb 100% of the laser beam, and that even a very short reflection of a class 4 laser will damage your eyes and can cause blindness. Also, it needs to be mentioned that the released gases and fumes of acrylics are toxic as well. The laser cutter uses a focusing lens that focuses the beam to our working material in order to get best performance. Doesn't that mean that the reflected laser light will be out of focus and less dangerous? You can't generalize this question. Indeed, the danger of a focused laser beam decreases by the distance, but how much depends on various factors, such as the focal length of the lens and the power of the laser tube itself. At this point, I want to set some things in perspective. A standard laser pointer you can buy at a store in the US or in Europe has an output power of 1 milliwatt. Some measuring instruments even have a laser diode that reaches up to 5 milliwatts of output power, what is the highest legal value when it comes to lasers in most parts of the world. World. The human eyelid reflex needs about 0.25 seconds to get triggered and close the eye. This already, under the right circumstances, could be enough to damage your eye when a 5 milliwatt laser beam hits your retina. In case of the K40, we are not talking about milliwatts, but watts. 35 watts are 35,000 milliwatts, so let's let this number burn into our brains for a second here.
How can I be sure that my laser goggles provide enough protection, even I order them to the right wavelength spectrum? In Germany, laser safety goggles must comply with the DIN EN 207 norm and needs approval of a registered testing laboratory. The use of uncertified safety goggles is not allowed. Certified laser goggles in Germany have the wavelength, what in the case of a CO2 laser is 10,600 nanometers, the mode of operation DIRM, the CE label and the protection scale number L or LB engraved into the frame. Also the goggles must be adapted to their specific task. Laser goggles with simple optical density or OD indication as in the US are not allowed in Germany. Do not make the same mistake than I did. By ordering a cheap pair of CO2 laser goggles on eBay they will not give you any feeling of protection when wearing them as you don't know what they are made of. Therefore my rule of thumb when it comes to my own safety, money plays a second role and Germans have one if not the strictest rules when it comes to job safety. A decent pair of certified laser goggles from Germany can be found for around 100 to 120 bucks. If you are like me, you can find online shops in Germany that post their safety equipment worldwide. A link should be in the description below. If you are a wearer of glasses like me, you also get laser goggles that fit on top of your regular ones. That is very helpful, I can tell. Moving on to question number 6. What symptoms appear when your eye got laser damage? Professor Eichler says, Severe eye damage becomes noticeable as black dots in your field of view. A CO2 laser will normally not penetrate through retina, but will damage the cornea. Laser eye damage is nearly impossible to treat, therefore precaution is very very important. Why is there a visible laser beam inside the laser tube when a CO2 laser works in the infrared spectrum? Is this a sign of a poor quality laser tube? This is hard to say. The visible light inside of the tube can be considered as a loss, but the heat loss will be even bigger. No laser is 100% lossless. Question number 8. Setting up a simple sheet of acrylic or plexiglass between me and the laser machine provides enough safety against any unwanted escaping laser light, so I do not need to wear safety goggles all the time. Wrong. Again, it depends on the wavelength. A CO2 laser can be absorbed by a sheet of macrolone, for example, which is a sort of polycarbonate. How thick the shield must be is defined by the output of the laser. However, only certified materials are allowed to be used for shielding against laser radiation. Question 9. Is that glare when cutting wood also dangerous for my eyes, so as watching straight into the sun? The comparison is pretty rough, as again it depends on the output power of the laser. Should I leave the room when using the laser cutter to avoid any laser radiation all in all? Professor Eichler. Laser processing machines should always be completely shielded. Me, I often use some additional masking tape, not only to minimize and shield any escaping laser light through all the small gaps in the lid, but mostly to conserve the smoke and fumes. Never leave the room when using your laser cutter. Laser cutting always consists of fire hazard. As I said in my videos before, I always have a fire extinguisher and a water spritz bottle next to the machine. Even I leave the room when operating the machine with the lid open, I continuously monitor the machine over my camera. Why does my infrared camera not pick up the laser beam of my CO2 laser? You would need a special kit of lenses to make infrared lasers visible to the camera. Question number 12. Could a defected K40 laser tube exceed the 40 watts of output power and become even more dangerous? Besides the obvious dangers of a laser-powered processing machine, secondary risks should always be kept in mind. A laser machine should always be made in a way that in case of a power peak triggered by a malfunction, the machine shuts down automatically. Also it needs to be considered that the laser can build up optical feedback and overheat. If the K40 laser includes all those safety features is questionable, so be aware that accidents can happen. So far I never had a major malfunction that melted the laser tube for example, but I'm always prepared to hear a loud bang in the back of the machine. 
This was the last question to Dr. Professor Eichler. In this video I was mainly talking about the dangers of the actual laser source, but keep in mind that a laser tube, in order to create laser radiation, needs a very high voltage of about 15 kV or 15,000 volts DC. Always ground your laser and make sure the inner components are grounded as well. When a failure occurs inside the machine, the high voltage can and will easily arc over to the chassis and lead to cardiac arrest when touching it. DC voltage, other than AC, makes your muscles contract in a way you can't let go when getting shocked. Mind that also the cooling water can conduct electricity in case of a failure. Even you use demineralized water. As a conclusion, yes, the K40 laser is a dangerous piece of equipment, but with the right knowledge and respect, accidents can be prevented. On the other hand, the K40 is an amazing machine. That makes a lot of fun to work with. I made a set of safety signs you can print out yourself, including an operating checklist. The download link to my webpage is in the description below. Again, a special thanks goes out to the German Academy of Laser Safety in Berlin and to Mrs. Schneeweiss and Dr. Professor Eichler for taking the time answering my questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are more K40 related videos and other interesting projects on my channel. If you ring this little bell, you will also get notified every time I upload a new video. Until then, be safe and see ya!